First, I would like to start by thanking everyone who has ever prayed for me. I appreciate it so much. And I needed it then, and I still need it now, so please don't stop. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who has ever talked to me as well. I may not have taken heed to your encouragements then, but praise God, they have not been in vain. I still remember those conversations and cherish them even now. So, before Christ, I had absolutely no sense of the danger I was in every second every day of my life. I was living like it too. I didn't see the weight of my sin. At school, I fell into saying things that obviously knew I shouldn't, because as soon as I got home, I turned it on. My friends and I had no respect for Christ, and as I'd been attending this church at the time, even knowing the Bible was true, I never had to lead by example by not doing and saying those things. Of course, I had a conscience that told me that what I heard every Sunday was true, but still I suppressed it, justifying my sin. Every week, I come to church with my parents and listen at least enough to take notes. Looking back, I believe that was really only one of the reasons that I'd be excited to for church, was just to take those notes it's like I was in school, not a genuine interest. Another reason is one of the most common ones, my friends. Church was a place where I knew I could socialize with people I didn't see on a regular basis. This became even more real in my seventh grade year when I started homeschooling. I look forward to being around people my age at least one day out of the week. And during this time, my mouth may have stopped, but my disobedience certainly didn't. I would constantly try to do what I wanted to do, and it didn't matter if I got in trouble for it multiple times. I was completely living for myself and my own sinful desires, so sinful and selfish desires. I was my own God. But eventually, my parents allowed me to go on social media. Oh, sorry. Now I wish I would have obeyed my parents because the things they tried to keep me from doing are the things I at times wish I never got on in the first place, namely social media. But eventually, my parents allowed me to go on social media and on July 26, 2019, I was scrolling on TikTok and came across this video by Elijah Lamb. I don't remember what it was specifically about, but I saw that he was live streaming that night and something drove me to join. I was shocked to hear someone my age preach the gospel to over a hundred people, telling us of the state we were in before God, how serious sin is, bring up its eternal consequence of hell, and call each one of us to repentance of faith in Christ. All things I'd heard before, but that night God gave me understanding, and I truly felt the weight of my sin heavily upon me, realizing how weak and foolish I was. I was a sinner in dire need of a Savior. The Lord opened my eyes to cry out to Him for a new heart that loved and obeyed Him. I repented and no longer wanted to live my life in sin with enmity against him, keeping more judgment upon myself second by second. I was already headed to hell since one sin was enough to get me there, but I had just been making it worse. After that night, I was on fire for God, wanted to soak in everything I could from his word, amazed at how amazing he is and how rich his word is. Amen. But in December, I got terribly discouraged and fell off. I continued to fall off. I read less and less, I prayed less and less, I cared less and less. I'd fallen into a constant state of emptiness and hopelessness that lasted for a while. I didn't read for myself or try to dig myself out of that pit as I felt deeper and deeper into it. And later I realized that I couldn't do that myself either. And the deeper I fell, the more discouraged I got because I told myself I wasn't saved and I thought if I hadn't been saved back in July, how could I ever? In my mind, my life was meaningless if I wasn't serving God, but still I lived like that for around five to six months. Until July 13th, on my way home from the beach, sitting in the passenger seat getting pizza, I was convicted and told myself I wasn't going to continue in this state. It was foolish. I wasn't happy where I was during these months, yet I still did nothing to get out of it. In my sin, I indulged in my sadness and disobedience during that time. From that day on, I began reading and praying again. I cried out to God to help me, to forgive me. And since then, I've grown more and more all thanks to God calling me out of that time. I've learned that my salvation is not based on my works, but only on Jesus' finished work on the cross. Amen. This past fall, I struggled with assurance because I was afraid to go back to how I was. And every time I wasn't reading my Bible every day or on fire for God, I would question it. But the difference is this time, I didn't let that discourage me. I let that drive me to trust in Jesus more, yes. to cling to Him and what He has done. Obedience became greater than the feeling of being on fire for God, and from Amen. obedience came my joy. Amen. It's when I'm serving Christ and obeying Him that I feel the best and most fulfilled. And I can't help but thank God for that because it is from Him. Amen. One of my greatest encouragements came from Romans 3.11, in the second part where it says, No one seeks for God. 
I knew that God had to have been working in my heart in order for me to seek him as I was. And I was in awe that God would choose me of all people. There was no, nothing good about me. And I rejected me all I reject, rejected him all this time, but still he loved me and died for me while I was yet still a sinner. Not because of anything I did, but according to his desire. And knowing that it was God who was working in me, Philippians 1 6, which says, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you and will bring it to completion on the day of Jesus Christ, who is also a great encouragement to me. To me. All of this still amazes me, like how gracious is God to us, that we are here under the teaching of his word and hearing the gospel. Amen. I still remember someone used to ask me and ask, and talk to me and ask, what's holding you back? I never had a good answer, and there are none. It's the time to turn to Christ is now, Amen. not later once you graduate high school or college. Sorry. I used to say that, and I probably would have kept pushing that day back until I died, mm. and it was too late. Nothing else matters in this world if we don't know Christ, and nothing is better than knowing Him. Amen. We are all called to repent and believe in Jesus Christ, serving Him as Lord, and loving Him as Savior, no matter how young or old. His arms are open, and His grace is abounding. Going through that time in early 2020 made me grow closer to God, and looking back on it, I'm thankful for it. It taught me that Christ will hold me fast, and by His strength, I know I will cling to Him with all that I have. Even though I know I'll never do it perfectly, or to the degree he deserves, I desire to live my life to serve, love, praise, and glorify him. I also love the, the testimony of friends coming to serve the Lord together too. Amen. And the Lord saving friends together in that way. So, um, Awesome to hear your testimony. Yes. We're really grateful for that. I'm sure you're encouraged by Royale's testimony also. Amen. So, uh, based upon Royale's profession of faith in Jesus Christ, putting her faith in Christ alone to save her, not in any of her own works, repenting of her sin, turning to Christ to follow Him by faith, and serving the Lord here as a member of Cornerstone Baptist Church, it's our joy to baptize Royale in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism.